Well, hello everyone. Glad to be a part of uh, this time to share with you. I am, have you ever stood in between some people? I ever had people get mad at each other and you almost have to jump in between them. There's this interesting verse that we've been looking at and it talks about um, God in what we would call leadership. Now, leadership for us that we think of uh, today isn't exactly how the Bible talks about it. When you see the word deacon or pastor or overseer in the Bible, you see all these different types of spiritual leadership. We often think of that as very distant or far away from who we are and from our loved ones and people around us. It's just, it's just like somebody else. It's like, a, it's like a vocation. But the Bible actually, it, and it's, it is very interesting. Did you know that the pastor and deacons in, a, in the Bible are equated, the pastor is equated with the father of a family, the deacons are equated with the mother, and the children are equated to the congregation. Children behave. Um, you know, as the pastor, as the deacons, as this, as that, those roles are just lined up in the Bible, and this is interesting, with um, a family. And it says, if, the, if you can't take care of your own actual family, how are you going to take care of the family of God? The word to rule to us, if we're ruling over somebody, we often think of something that the Bible, if you remember this verse, it actually says, uh, you do not rule over each other like the Gentiles do. So God's authority is different looking than what we would think uh, the world kind of, when we think of authority, it's not what the Bible is actually talking about. When it talks about these roles of leadership, it actually gives a thing that's kind of the main function. It means to rule or to lead in the Bible. What that means in the Bible is to stand at the head of, to protect out in front, to be out in front, or to stand in between trouble that's coming and the people that you care about. So as you do that for your family, it says, that's exactly the kind of person God's looking for in the church. And it's this role that's really called a priest. Now, we don't think of priests as being that, but you kind of interact in between. And the Old Testament concept, uh, we've already gone here. I've preached about this for a couple of months. Deuteronomy 28, 18 says, if you obey my word, you will be the head and not the tail. If you look in the woods back there, I don't see a lot of animals. The only animals I'm seeing right now maybe are some squirrels. And a squirrel has a head and a tail. A deer has a head and a tail. Like everything has a head and a tail, basically. Um, so it says you'll be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Deuteronomy 28, 13. John 8, 29 also says this interesting motivation for why you serve or you lead. What are our motivations to head our families? It says, Jesus says, and he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone for I always do those things that please him. So Jesus talks about his motivation, why he did what he did. He wanted to please the father. And that's the exact motivation. The Bible says we are to have to lead. Yes, I love my family, but I also want to please God. It's not really pleasing God to just bail on people. It's not really pleasing God to kind of leave people behind or you just kind of say, well, you know, you've left them there. You don't really care about somebody if you just dump them somewhere and uh, don't take uh, an interaction. And leadership in this sense means to stand in between, to protect, to help. Now, what's so interesting to me is this incredible, you know, I just heard... I don't know what I heard back there. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I just heard like uh, something huff at me. I'm not sure what on earth <laughs> that was. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm just looking around. I'm like, uh, what on earth was that? <laughs> it might have been a who knows what. Anyways, there was something not liking me back there somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. And we're going to look at the word of the Holy Spirit. It means paraclete uh, is the Greek word that we often hear. That word para means from close beside. Now, whatever I heard around me was actually close enough that I was like, what on earth? I didn't set that up. I did not do that on purpose. Para means from close beside and kleo, which means to make a call. This is the person of the Holy Spirit. 
Now, as leaders, we often get in the, you ever had this expression where you're like, boy, they're really getting in the way. Well, a person who leads for their family or leads for their friends, they get in between, they don't get in the way. Uh, God doesn't want us to get in the way. He wants us to get in between. Have you ever been in church or been in a bunch of relationships or maybe in work? You ever seen people just get in the way of everything all the time? Getting in between and getting in the way is two completely different things. And the Holy Spirit, it's this incredible thing. It's called the paraclete, which is close beside and to make a call. There's a time in all of our lives where even when we're standing in between for other people and we're not getting in the way, but we're standing in between and we're acting in their best interest, you still have to make a call to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can help you size up situations given insight, not just for yourself, but for the people around you. So there's times where as a leader, you're going to call on the Lord for yourself. There's also also, uh, individuals where you're going to call on the Lord for them. Jesus would listen to parents when they called on the Lord for their kids. He would heal kids based on the parents' call. Sometimes lepers would scream out or people would yell out that we're old enough. But there's times where you're acting in between for someone else. You can make a call for them too. And not only can you make a call, you make a call of the Holy Spirit. And he's not only close beside that that you'll make this call. He'll activate as you do that for the people you're leading. I just think it's so important to say all this, is that all of those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And once you get it going, that call in your heart, sometimes you have to keep calling. It may not just turn around the second that you make a call. But what I want to tell you is the Holy Spirit is very close to you. As a matter of fact, he's right beside you. He's para. He's literally right next to you. And he's the one, the Bible says, that makes the accurate call about what's going on in your life. When the Holy Spirit shows you, he's the spirit of truth and he will lead you into all truth. There's times where I wonder what on earth is going on in my life. There's times I'm praying for somebody else and I don't know what on earth I'm seeing. Now, I'm looking all around. I heard something huff at me from behind and it made me a little nervous. I'm like, what on earth? just made that noise. Well, with the Holy Spirit, he's very, very, very close, and he's very in tune with what you're dealing with. Actually, he's more in tune than we are. There's times the Bible says that no one knows the Spirit, no one knows what's inside of man, except for the spirit of a man. We don't even know our own way around ourselves and our own feelings. So sometimes, it's like the Lord tells us about ourself. He also can tell us what maybe not just our limits are, but when you hit your limit, he's not limited. And I feel this for somebody watching today. When you hit your limit for yourself or for other people, when you, you're like, I'm beyond my ability to deal with a situation, I've hit my limit, that limit, the Holy Spirit, it says, you make a call and he'll make the right call. God will guide you into all truth by his spirit. So, you, you know, you may say, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond my ability to deal with something. You plant the Holy Spirit close beside you. You draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. Not only will he listen to you, but he'll activate on your behalf to tell you somehow the things you need to know. And that's how I, like, sometimes people are like, how do you lead as a Christian? That's how you lead. You lead by being close to God. When you're close to God, when we get together together, in one accord, as we all get together, as we're close to God, as the Holy Spirit draws us close to himself, he'll draw other people close to at the same time. It's like a consecutive drawing. It's not just that God will draw one person. It says where two or three are gathered together in my name. It doesn't say where two or three are ornately dressed. There I'll be in the midst of them if they're wearing the right outfit. It says where two or three are brought together or gathered together by me is exactly what it says, the Holy Spirit, where they're brought together by me, there I am in the midst of them. So God can unite you to a purpose. He can unite you um, to his plans and you can receive a close beside call, so to speak, from the Holy Spirit. He, he's got your back. Yes, all these phrases that we've used, but I don't think we really realize His name means, one of the names of the Holy Spirit means to make a call. 
You have to call him and draw near to him. And what you'll find is as you draw near, others will too. And those that collective put together has a powerful purpose. With people who are also drawn together by the Holy Spirit to make a call, to activate in faith, to, to allow the Lord to move. That, perp, that collective purpose that he draws us towards, that you will have a powerful ability with other believers in the name of Jesus to finish the race, to finish what you that the Lord has kind of said, okay, I want you uh, to glorify my name in a certain situation. We're not going to finish the race in the flesh. We're going to finish it in the spirit. So the Holy Spirit, as he draws us, we're, we start to see the purposes of God manifest in our midst in relationship, but also sometimes in leadership. So it's not just that we are consuming like information that we're reading books so we know what to do in a better situation. We're responding to the Lord to get God, uh, not to get God into our situation. But when we make a call, when we draw near to the Lord, he draws near to us. And it's really important to realize it's the person who's close beside you, para, like as close as it gets, that makes a call. And it's always the right call. John, uh, 1 John 2, 1 says, Little children of me, these things I am writing to you so that you might not sin. And if anyone should sin, an advocate we have with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. What's interesting is that word advocate. So when it says that Jesus is the high priest, what's what it's talking about, it says the paraclete, uh, you, we often think is the Holy Spirit. It's also Jesus. The same um, word is used in that scripture as its word, uh, word for word, the exact word for the Holy Spirit. We have an advocate in heaven who's pleading before the Father on our behalf. His name is Jesus. He'll activate not only in you the Holy Spirit, but he'll send the Holy Spirit to you and he'll give you the information. He'll guide you. Not only are we talking about the Holy Spirit here, we're talking about Jesus. And it's really important to see these things, that Jesus is activating uh, to making a call on your behalf in heaven to your heavenly father to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus. So some of us, we screw up in life. We fall flat. We uh, don't have the right uh, purpose on every motive that we have. But even though we're imperfect, it's like some people are like, look, I didn't, I made the right call once but then I made the wrong call twice. Like we aren't going to get everything right. And when we don't, Jesus can still bind us to the purposes of God. And I'm really kind of sensing this here as I kind of wind down. A lot of us think, okay, I got it right once or twice. I got in the right direction a few times, but I've got it wrong three or four times. And I'm not sure if I can keep it going or get it going again. The word advocate is the same for the Holy Spirit as it is, is uh, God has put you here to call on the Lord and he, through the blood of Jesus, when we get it wrong four times, he can forgive that sin. Now we want to repent, we want to turn, but somebody is probably watching today saying, I am very discouraged. I don't necessarily believe that I can get back on track. I can't get doing the things that God wants me to do. You just need to say, Jesus, I ask you to help me. I ask you to guide me by your Holy Spirit. But I ask you, Lord, don't just put me in this situation where it's bad. I call on your name right now. May forgiveness be granted to me. The Bible says all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved or delivered. Both, actually. So if you call on the Lord, Jesus Christ, your Savior, has been put here you know, Jesus said, my food is to do the will of the Father. Um, I want to have a heart after God. But when I screw up, God is able to forgive me. God is able to see me through the blood of his son, Jesus. And it's really understood that this is an important thing to see. We're not perfect. And when we stand before God, we, we are covered by the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will perfect you. Uh, he will sanctify you but you're never going to be perfect. You always have a redeemer, but Jesus through his blood, God's gonna see him, uh, his blood covering your sins. So when we advocate on behalf of other people, when we stand in between, when we stand in the gap, please hear me. We're, patter, our pat, we're patter, 
pitter-pattering little feet. And we're like, oh God, I pray for my kids or my grandkids. Oh God, I hear like something going on. You know, it's like Job, I, I pray for my kids if they did something bad today that I don't know about. That's what Job would pray every day. You, when you look at yourself and you say, man, how do I stand in between and, and reach out to God for not just myself, for people around me? Remember, Jesus is the guy that's the pattern. He's the high priest. He's doing the perfect job but we have to do our job. Our job is covered by the shed blood of our high priest, but we're not limited by our own righteousness. Our own belief in Jesus is what sets us free. And even though we're not perfect, Jesus is acting in heaven in the same way that we need to be acting here on earth, standing in the gap for people. Loving us, we need to be loving uh, those around us. Remember the guy, there's this guy in the Bible. I actually read this in my, I have a little NIV, 1984 NIV version. I love uh, that little version I read. I just read it before I preach. It talked about this guy who uh, was forgiven this enormous debt. And then there was a, a kind of a, a servant of his, a friend of his, and he had a very small debt. But this guy who got forgiven like $50 million about is what the size of the debt was. He wouldn't forgive a guy a $1,200 debt. And when the guy who forgave him the big debt found out he didn't forgive the little debt, the guy that didn't forgive the little debt, the guy that gave the big debt free, he's like, you are toast. I forgave you. You should have forgiven him. And he turned him over to the torturers, the jailers. What I want to say is this. Jesus does the exceedingly amazing reach on our behalf. The least we can do is reach to the people around us. It's really hard to believe what Jesus did on the cross, that he stood in the gap for mankind. I, I just got to stay and play my part for the people around me, in my relationships, in my family, in my world, in my house, my home, maybe some of my employees, some of my friends. Jesus did the big one. I just got the little one to do. My perfect pattern to follow is him. I hope you can follow him too. Look at yourself and say, man, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to help everybody, but the Holy Spirit, I have faith. I want to close with this thought. The person who makes the perfect call, the one to make a call, the name, you make a call to the Holy Spirit. He stands close beside and he makes the right call. When you are activating in faith on other people's behalf, it's not that you're going to be perfect. But at least you call, you make that call to the Lord and he can come up beside you. He can help you. Jesus is determined uh, in heaven. He keeps acting as high priest on our behalf. The function that he has been playing since he went to heaven is this. He's interceding. He's standing in between. He's pleading for the Father. Who can we stand in between two for? Kids, family. Parents, friend, who is it you're praying for? Who is it you're leading this way? I want you to know God can make you certain in your heart that, that not only is the blood of Jesus sufficient for you, but you can stand for them too. You can call on the name of Jesus. If you get backed into a corner, if somebody around you, you need to see them free. The Bible says this, we have to believe this, have faith. And everyone, every single person who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Not some of them, not a few of them, all of them. If you don't call, it's already finished. Call and God will be with you and be with you today. Lord Jesus, I pray that Jesus, we would just whisper a prayer. We're only limited if we don't call. I pray that each one of us would take the time to believe I can make that call I'm going to put two and two together, Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to breathe deeply and say, I'm going to not only pray for me, I'm going to pray for the people that are around me that are lost. Lord, I'm not perfect, but your son is. I don't stand in my own perfection. I stand in my own limits, but Jesus, you're unlimited. Holy Spirit, there's no limits on you. So we have faith in you to do what only you can do to set people free in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.